Good evening, Los Angeles and everyone around the world. I am Kim Rocks, and we are going to be talking about some truths out of the Gospel of John today. Um, I just love the book of John. I feel like um, it kind of gives you a synopsis of what the Bible is about and who Jesus is and kind of the story of Jesus. And I'm, I'm very fascinated by it. So we are going to get right into it. I'm going to put my glasses on here so I can read good. And I am using the NLT version. I love the Life Application Study Bible. Um, what, what's important about this, the study Bibles is that you are able to read your scriptures. And then if you want to get into their study notes, so the you know, a team of scholars have gone in here, and this is a, a, an accurate translation, and uh, you can go into the study notes, and you can get some further information. And if you don't know how to study the Bible, if you're new to the Bible, I, I really recommend it because you can get insight on the scriptures. And then if you want to take it further, you can study geography, you can study history, um, landmarks, artifacts, and also you can do word studies. Word studies are great to, to break down Hebrew and Greek and all of that stuff to just see what the, the original meanings were. And this Bible has kind of done a lot of that for you, so I recommend it. And before we get started, I, I just want to welcome the Lord into this Bible study. And I just want to say a prayer that um, Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask you to come into this time with us. Give us a fresh word. I thank you for your anointing. Open our eyes and our ears. Give us understanding so that we can apply this to our lives and walk it out. And Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, and I thank you, Lord, that you change us from glory to glory. And Jesus, it's in your holy name that I ask and pray. Amen. So let's get right in here. Um, John 1, it talks about God. God became a human, and it says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. So he created everything, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his li life brought light to everyone. His word brought life to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. That's a powerful statement right there. Um, you know, God is all-powerful. So the, the darkness cannot overcome the light, cannot overcome the light of Christ. And right there, we're going we're gonna to get into some of the study notes and just see what it has to say about even that particular that was John 1 and verse 5. And we're going we're gonna to break down verse 5. It says, The darkness can never extinguish it. It means that the darkness of evil never has and never will overcome God's light. Jesus Christ is the creator of life. And his life brings light to humankind. In his light, we see ourselves as we really are. That's the thing about worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. You don't have to hide. He already knows you inside and out. He sees you just as you are. You can turn to him and just be who you are. He created you, and he loves you. In his light, we see ourselves as we really are, sinners in need of a Savior. When we follow Jesus, the true light, we can avoid walking blindly through spiritual darkness that sin brings. Sin brings death brings spiritual darkness. It clouds our judgment. Jesus lights the path ahead of us, illuminating the truth and clarifying our thoughts so we can see how to live. He removes the darkness of sin from our lives. In what ways have you allowed the light of Jesus Christ to shine into your life? Let him guide you and you'll never need to stumble in darkness. Um, the Bible says that he directs our steps. You know, he, he's a good shepherd. He's the good father. He hymns us in. He disciplines us. He gives us correction. The Holy Spirit convicts us. 
people will have um, conviction if we're not quite on track, and that's a good thing. His discipline and conviction is, is good for us because it keeps us from being harmed. You know, we are, we are going to sin, but what is great about having a, a personal Savior is we can have forgiveness. We have, we, we have his blood, his sacrifice that he, gave, he died for us, and he covers our sins, and he helps change us from the inside out, and we can be better people. Now, um, in a minute, we're going to go back and look through um, some more of that scripture there, and I want to explain a little bit who John the Baptist was. That we're talking about John, um, one of the apostles, and so uh, it says um, the, the author of the g- book of John is the Apostle John, and he is the son of Zebedee and brother of James, who, who was called the Son of Thunder, Sons of Thunder. He was one of the Sons of Thunder, and I think I love that name. Um, his original audience was new Christians and searching non-Christians. And what he said, um, he spoke, and galaxies started to whirl. Stars burned in the heavens, and planets began orbiting their stars. Words of awesome, unlimited, unleashed power. He spoke again, and the waters and lands were filled, and plants and creatures running, swimming, growing, multiplying. Words of animating, breathing, pulsing life. Again he spoke, and man and woman were formed, thinking, speaking, and loving. Thinking, speaking, and loving. Words of personal and creative glory. Eternal, infinite, unlimited is what he was. Eternal, infinite, unlimited. And always will be the maker and Lord of all that exist. That's so amazing. And then he came in the flesh to a speck in the universe called planet Earth. The mighty creator became a part of creation. And uh, was, we're going to read that one again. The mighty creator became a part of the creation, limited by time and space and susceptible to aging, sickness, and death. But love compelled him. So he came to rescue and save those who were lost and to give the, the gift of eternal life. He is the word. He is Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. And I, I need a little bit of tissue. My nose is running. Let's see. I'll, I'll grab some here in a second. It is this truth that the Apostle John brings to us in this book. John's gospel is more than a historical account of the life of Jesus. It is a powerful argument for the incarnation, a conclusive demonstration that Jesus was and is the very heaven-sent Son of God and the holy source of eternal life. Now, let's go go on into that. John discloses Jesus' identity with his very first words. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. The rest of the book continues the theme, John, an eyewitness, chose eight of Jesus' miracles or miraculous signs, as he calls them, to reveal Jesus' divine and human natures and life-giving mission. And these eight signs were, the first one was that he turned water into wine. And we're talking about um, the miracles that Jesus did to reveal that he was divine. He was human and he was divine. And he turned water into wine. He um, performed a healing on the official son. He healed the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. And he fed 5,000 with just a few loaves of fish. He walked on water. Jesus walked on water. He encouraged Peter to. Peter got out there a little bit, but he walked on water. He, rest- he restores sight to the blind man, and he raised Lazarus from the dead. After the re- resurrection, giving the disciples an overwhelming catch of fish. And Adam, if you could please bring me a tissue. I, I've had a cold for the last couple of days and my nose is running. I could really use some tissue if there's some. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so 
let's get back in here. Um, in every chapter, Jesus' deity is revealed. And Jesus, and Jesus' true identity is underscored through the life and titles he is given. The word, the one and only son, the lamb of God, the son of God, the true bread, the resurrection and the life, the vine, and the formula is I am. Now, excuse me, for just a minute, they, get, they got me some tissue. Um, I've been traveling a lot these past six months. I went to Greece. I went to Paris. I've been to Dallas, uh, California. And I, from traveling, I have gotten a couple of little head colds. No, no coronavirus, <laughs> just a head cold. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so let's get back in here. So in every chapter, Jesus' deity is revealed, and Jesus' true identity is underscored through the titles he is given. The Word, the one and only Son, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the true bread, the resurrection and the life, the vine. The formula is I am. When Jesus uses that phrase, he affirms his pre-existence and eternal deity. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. And you know what? A shepherd keeps you hemmed in. If you get lost, he goes out and looks for you. He doesn't leave the one behind. That's what a good shepherd does. And that's something that you can build your faith around and you can have trust in. If you start to lose your way, if you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and you start to lose your way, he's going to guide you back in. And one of the surest ways to stay on track is to be in the Bible yourself. You're going to recognize the Lord's voice. The Holy Spirit's going to... Um, be indwelling, and uh, as soon as you accept him as your savior, believe in your heart that he um, was born of a virgin, he walked this earth as a man, deity and man, he died, and he rose again on the third day, and you can believe that by faith, and just ask him into your heart, and as soon as you do that, he's faithful to be right there, and he's always with us, but there's something... Um, significant and eternal salvation comes with accepting him into your heart and the Holy Spirit can lead and guide you and you can recognize his voice from scripture scripture gets us to where we need to be it helps us change it changes us from the inside it fills us up and some of the attributes and characteristics of God are, are love joy faithfulness compassion kindness peace long-suffering, and I, I know I mentioned love, but it's unconditional love, unconditional love. Not very many people get to experience unconditional love, but with Jesus, you can experience unconditional love. That means you can just be who you are. You can um, let go and give him the reins. Let Jesus be in charge of your life. And the, like I was saying, the best way to, to do that is to understand his mandates and know how to love right, how to love correctly. The Bible tells you what, what's wrong and right and what's good for our lives, and it's for us. He's for us. And the Bible says that if he's for us, who can be against us? Let's see here. <clears throat> he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And what's powerful about him saying he is the way, the truth, and the life is basically what I was saying. He guides you. He is the creator of all things, and he created you. He knows the very number of hairs on your head, and he's going to take care of you. He wants, he wants um, what's best for you. Now, um, being a Christian doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect because we're still living in a fallen world, and we're still sinful people. We make bad choices. We make bad choices and it affects our lives. And sometimes we go through discipline. We go through seasons where those um, bad choices do not correct themselves immediately. And we have to wait those out. And in those seasons, what is important is that God never leaves us. He's with us. He walks through those seasons with you. And along that walk, he teaches you. 
and it begins to change you. And there, there can be great healing in those times, and you can move forward and overcome, and you may be able to help another person that's in a similar position because you've walked it out with the Lord. And, you know, maybe you're experiencing a bad time in your life, Maybe you're experience, Maybe you're in the height of, of your season. You know, the Bible says such a time as this, and now is the time. Now, today is the day, and now is the time. And maybe you're having a great season, but you don't want to forget who is the person that put you in that way because it's, it all comes down to the Lord. And if you're having a bad season, if you're walking out um, a, an illness, a divorce, a trauma, Something that is not just immediately, you know, going to be out of your way, out of your mindset, out of your emotions. Turn to the Lord. You can pray to him. He hears you, and he will answer your prayers. He, he wants to help you. And uh, I, I would hate to be going through life without the possibilities of having the Lord guide me through when I get off track. So he's the way, the truth, and the life, and he's absolute truth. And there, there's something to be said for absolute truth because um, it's, it's not wishy-washy, it's not shaky, it's solid. It's a solid foundation that you can stand on. And that's what Jesus Christ offers as your Savior through the Word of God. You can know him through the Word of God, and he's represented in here. The greatest sign, of course, is the resurrection. The, and John provides a, stir, a stirring eyewitness account of finding the empty tomb. Then he records various post-resurrection appearances by Jesus. You know, he was seen by over 500 people. John, a devoted follower of Jesus Christ, has given us a personal and powerful look at his beloved master, the eternal Son of God. As you read his story, commit yourself to believe in and follow him. Now, um, let's look at, I want to look at some of the, the mega themes that the book of John offers to us. And one of them that I, I I really want to focus on is the Holy Spirit so you can understand more about the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught, let me, let me bend this a little different way. There we go. So Jesus taught his disciples that the Holy Spirit would come after he ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit would indwell, guide, and counsel and comfort those who follow Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit, Christ's presence and power are multiplied in all who believe. It's multiplied through the believers. We're the body of Christ. We're his hands, his feet, his voice, and we can have the mind of Christ. And the Bible, the Word of God says that we can ask for wisdom, and he will give it abundantly. And, and the, the, the Bible even tells us that if we're lacking in faith, we can even ask God to help our unbelief, and he's going to help build our faith. Let's get back in here. Um, the Holy Spirit would then indwell, guide, counsel, and comfort those who follow Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit, Christ's presence and power are multiplied in all who believe, and through him we are drawn to God in faith. We must know the Holy Spirit to understand all Jesus taught. So the, the Holy Spirit helps us understand what Jesus taught. We can experience Jesus' love and guidance as we allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in us. On the third day after he died, Jesus rose from the dead. He was verified by his disciples and many eyewitnesses. The reality of the resurrection changed the, changed the disciples and frightened Deserter, deserters to they it changed the disciples from frightened to deserters to dynamic leaders in the new church. The resurrection is the foundation of the Christian faith. Because of this event, we can be charged, we can be changed just like the disciples were, and have confidence that our bodies will one day be raised to live with Christ forever. We can have eternal life, and it, it will be in perfection. We will ha no longer have our illnesses. He will wipe away all of our tears. 
And it, it's going to be a glorious time to be living in our heavenly bodies and in that kind of wholeness and completeness, that um, just unconditional love. The, the things that we experience now of those are still in a sinful world, but, but in eternal life, it will be whole and complete. Excuse me for just a second. I'm going to wipe my nose again. There we go. Now we're talking about the resurrection and how that changes us and how it changes, changed his disciples. And that same power that raised Christ to life can give us the ability to follow Christ each day. We can follow him. He, he, he can help us. And um, when we're talking about eternal life, so I want to talk about that just a little bit more. Before the world began, Jesus lived with God and he will reign forever with him. In John, we see Jesus revealed in power and magnificence even before his resurrection. Because Jesus is God, he lives forever and can offer eternal life to us. We are invited to begin living in a personal, eternal relationship with him now. By trusting him, we, we receive a new life. And even though our physical bodies must grow old and die, we will be resurrected and live forever with Jesus. And that is truly glorious. And I was going to look at um, one of the key verses in the book of John. It says, um, The disciples saw Jesus do many other miracles, signs in addition to the, the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. And, you know, I can't think of a better way to live than to be walking in the power of Jesus Christ. The, the creator of everything, the creator of you, the Holy Spirit indwelling. Darkness cannot overcome the light, and you will have the light of Christ within. And that means we are covered, we are protected, we are provided for. Now, like I said, it's not a, a perfect existence, and we aren't promised that we'll just receive everything we want, but he's there to help us through our lives, and he is with us always and we we are changed from glory to glory i just want to say thank you lord for that now um before we move on to anything else i wanted to just mis mention here so we talked about um john the apostle now i want to explain who john the baptist is and those are, are two different Johns in the book of John. And I think it's important to, to understand who John the Baptist is as opposed to John the Apostle. So John the Baptist, there's no getting around it. John the Baptist was unique. He wore odd clothes, ate strange food, food and preached an unusual message to the Judeans who went out to the wastelands to see him. But John did not aim at uniqueness for its own sake. Instead, he aimed at obedience. And that's what we want to aim for is obedience. Sometimes um, when the Lord is asking us to be obedient and the Holy Spirit is guiding us, and sometimes we want to do our own thing. We don't want to be obedient. We, we want to have our way. And that's not so great. You know, it's important to be obedient. Sometimes... When you're first learning how to follow Christ, obedience, um, it's a good thing and it protects us and it guards us and guides us. But we can feel like um, maybe as our life is changing, we, we might wonder uh, if we don't get to have our own way of what we want right now that we're going to be missing out. But I can assure you that we're not missing out. Anytime we're following God and being obedient to the Lord, you're not going to miss out on anything. In fact, he may protect you from something that's not going to be good for you. Um, Short-term pleasures, 
do not off, often do not have long-term benefits for us and sometimes can be um, harmful to us. So it's better to be obedient. And, and if you're struggling in those areas, uh, just know that you can cry out to God exactly as you are. Don't run from Him. Turn towards Him. And you can turn to Him by praying, praying and getting into your word and developing your personal relationship with Christ and accepting, you, accepting him into your heart as your personal savior. So John did not aim, but John did not aim at uniqueness for its own sake. Instead, he aimed at obedience. He knew he had a specific role to play in the world, announcing the coming of the savior. And he put all his energies into his task. I love that about John. He put everything into that. He knew he was supposed to be announcing the Savior, and he put everything into that task. I want to follow in his footsteps. Luke tells us that John was in the wilderness when God's word of direction came to him. John was ready and waiting. The angel who had announced John's birth to Zechariah had made it clear that this was the child that this child was to be a Nazarite, someone set apart for God's service. That's what a Nazarite was. He was set apart for God's service. John remained faithful to that calling. This wild-looking man had no power or position in the Jewish political system, but he spoke with almost irresistible authority. So um, people were moved by his words because he spoke the truth, challenging them to turn from their sins baptizing them as a symbol of their repentance. And hundreds responded. And, you you know, when you are going in the wrong, wrong direction, what repentance means is just turning around and go in the right direction. Just turn and begin walking with the Lord again. You know, we get off track. Sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. We can usually sense when we're getting off track. And I just want to offer that get a Bible, download a, a Bible app, and turn to the Lord. Start incorporating him into your life. Make time for the Lord. Get into the Word, even if you just read one scripture, one paragraph. You can get a devotional book, or you can start in, a, in something like the book of John. And that, that'll start taking you through the Bible, and it will help you grow to know the Lord and have an intimate relationship with him and what he pours into you, you'll be able to pour out to others, people in your community, in your family, in your work. You'll be able to be a loving person around, around these people. You can ask for help and the peace of God that passes all understanding. You can have that and you can minister that to those around you and you, you can, you know, Walking with the Spirit of the Lord, people will notice some, that there is something different about you, something different and special. More, you're more peaceful. You're more joyful. You're, you're forgiving. You're loving. Those are the things that we're aiming for. We've been forgiven much, and we want to be forgiving to others. Um, you know, as you develop your relationship with the Lord, and He'll reveal, He'll reveal your weaknesses, your sins, but the Lord's strength is is made perfect in our weaknesses and um he doesn't let you get away with too much at some point he reveals the the, the absolute truths about us so because he wants to protect us and he wants to guide us and i just want to pray with you now in in jesus name amen